Hello and welcome to an introduction to programming using Visual Basic exercises for beginners. In this exercise we are going to create a unit conversion application. We are to write a program that displays nine different units of measure, requests the unit to convert from, the unit to convert to and the quantity to be converted and then displays the quantity that was converted in a text box for the output. So we are given a units.txt file that has these values and you can see what this is is a conversion for each of these units into feet so one inch equals 0 0.0833 foot one phantom equals six feet one foot equals well one foot uh, let's say one kilometer equals 3281.5 feet and so forth so all these in a text file is conversion to feet and that way, since we are using the same conversion for each of the units, we'll be able to convert them in between each other. So for example, let me convert meters and kilometers because they are the easiest to see. So let's say I want to convert one meter and find out how many kilometers that is. So basically what we'll do is divide the 3.2815 that you see right here with the kilometer value, which is 3281.5 and you get that one meter equals 0 0.001 kilometer which is correct and in reverse if you want kilometers into meter you will divide 3281.5 which is the value assigned to kilometers in feet divided by the feet value for the meter which is 3.2815 and you get thousand and that means that kilometer has 1000 meters which is correct so this is the conversion we'll be using in our program so this is our form there's a list box that lists all the nine units starts with inch phantom foot and the order of these is the same as the order from the text file you can see we got inch phantom foot and so forth all the way to yard so they match so what we're going to do is for the input we will enter the length that we want to convert let's say 1000 meters to kilometers. So the user will enter a number into the first text box, but then the original unit will be a click on the list box and the desired unit or the units that we are converting to will be another click on the text box. I'm sorry, in the list box. We'll be basically clicking on the list box to select the unit we want to convert from and the unit we want to convert to. And then we will click the convert button and the conversion will be performed and the desired length conversion will be into the txt output.txt which is our text box for the output all right so i'm in visual studio 2015 here is my form just like you saw and here is my file which i have in the debug folder in my solution and this is how it's set up the first is the unit name which is for example inch comma and then is the feed value for that unit in this case it's 0 0.0833 then there's phantom and it comma and equals six foot and the last one is yard comma and it equals three feet so this is the style that the file was provided to us all right so uh, i'll click the convert button and let's start coding and the first thing i'm going to do is create few variables the first one i'm going to create is uh, a form level variable or a class level meaning that I'll have access to these throughout the whole form and all the procedures and functions on the form. So the first one is going to be a counter, which will be counting the clicks in my list box. Remember the first clicks, let me just show you, the first click will display the value of the original unit and the second click will display the desired unit, what we are converting to. And then I click again and that I want the original unit to change and I want the desired unit to be deleted because obviously we are changing the values now so basically when I click the first time that means original unit second time it means desired unit and third time we are going again so it's going to be the original unit and the desired unit will be clicked afterwards so like I said I'm going to declare variable counter and the original value will be set to zero the next variables will be integers as well and those will be the indexes in my list box again when I click 
on the list box, I want to make sure I capture what conversion unit I'm using. So I want to capture what's the original unit that I'm converting from and what's the desired unit I'm converting to. Because the order of these units matches the order in the file, I'll be able to capture these numbers, put them into an array and use the indexes that correspond with each of these numbers in my calculations. So I'm going to create two variables that capture the indexes of the unit I'm converting from and to because they will match the indexes of these numbers in my array. So I'll just call them original unit index and the desired unit index. So here's my form level variables. And the first thing I'm going to code is the values of the click on the list box. So I'll double click the list box and go to the LST unit selected index changed, which basically is the event when I click any time on the list box, I will capture the item that I clicked on or the index of that item in the list box. So every time I click on the list box or select any of the units from the list box, I want to increase the counter. So I will do counter plus equals one because that's what I want to do in order to keep track of how many clicks I use so I know whether I'm selecting the unit I want to convert from or the unit I want to convert to. So now I can do an if statement and check if the counter is one, then I'm selecting the unit I'm converting from. So my txt original dot text will equal the unit that I clicked on in the list box. And if you look at it, the format of the text, which by the way is simply hard coded by clicking the little arrow here and edit items. And you can see that all the units follow the same format. You get the number, then dot and space, and then you have the name of the unit. So what I can do is select the LST units, which is the list box dot text, but I don't want to display the number and the space. So I will simply do a substring and I only want to display the word of the unit. So I want to omit the number, the dot, and the space. In other words, I want to start from the index number three. Zero is the number, index number one is the dot, and index number two is the space. So I'll start from index number two, which basically means that it starts from index number three. Zero, one, and two are not included, and it will display everything on the same line all the way to the end of the word. So if I click, let's say, foot, number three, dot and space will not be displayed and all that will be displayed is foot. It starts from index two all the way to the end of the word. And I can now assign the original unit index to the selected index from the list box. Again, the order of the units in the list box will match the file that was supplied to us so we can use that index to basically display the value with that index from an array that I will declare a little later. So our original unit index will equal the LST units dot selected index. Simple as that. Now, if we are not on counter number one, so else if our counter is two, then we know we are clicking on a unit we're trying to convert to, which is desired unit of conversion. So I can do a txt desired dot text and it will simply equal just like before the LST units dot text dot substring of two to the end of the word. So that's our second click. And now we have our desired unit index that we can assign a value of the selected index from the list box. So now I have the original unit selected. I have the desired unit selected. What if I click again? So we'll do else statement. So if our counter equals three, then we're going back basically to the same what we did in our counter number one. We are going to check the, uh, select the original unit and change the original unit index. So I'll copy paste that. However, I also want to clear the desired text box because that will be entered after I click again on the list box. So our txt desired dot clear and what I'm going to do now is reset the counter. However, I don't want to reset it back to zero. I want to reset it to one 
So when I click again, our counter will be increased again by one. So if it equals one to begin with, it will be two. So it will come over here and we will be selecting the desired unit. And we can actually test that. Let's run it and see how that works. So here is my form. If I click the first time, let's say foot, I display foot. If I click second time, I display kilometers into desired units. And if I click again, meaning I'm changing my original unit, let's say to mile, you can see it changed to mile and deleted the desired unit because now when I click, it will display the desired unit. And that's how it goes with the clicks. So this is working correctly so far. All right, so now we can go to our form. I'll double click the convert button. And uh, you know what, let me just move this to the top so you can see it better. And just like before, I need few variables. So I'm going to declare a variable for the length, which is going to be the input from the user. That's going to be the number of units that we are converting, let's say thousand meters into kilometers and so forth. So dim length, and it's going to be a double. The next, we need to read the file units.txt and assign it to a, some kind of array and we can do it as string. Now the file contains the name of the unit, comma, and then the, the number. We only are interested in the number, but the first we need to read the whole thing line by line. So I'm going to create an array, I'll just call it input file, and it's going to be a string, and I will read all the lines from the units.txt. And like I said, we don't need the name of the unit, we only need the number that is converted into the feed, again, that's the number after the comma. So I'm going to create another array, and this time I'll call it just units, and it's going to be of double. Now I could just hard code how many there are going to be of indexes. We know that there's nine units, but if it changes, then it's better not to hard code it. Instead, it's going to be as many units as there are in the input file. So we will do, for the length, we will do input file dot length. That's going to be the length of our units array. And now we can load those units from the file, from my input file, into the units. So I'm going to create a sub procedure and I'll just call it load units. And I can call it from my button click event here. So let's just do that, load units. And I'm going to pass the input file to it, which is an array, and the units, which is another array. So I will read the input file and I will place the number from that input file line by line into our units. So in my sub, I'll use those as arguments and they're going to be by reference. They're by default by reference because these are array. And what it means is that if I change anything in my load unit sub procedure, those arrays will be changed throughout the whole program. But just to make sure that it's explicitly coded, I will actually say that it's by reference, even though by default it is. And to load the units, it's very simple. We'll do a for loop that will loop through all the lines that are in the input file, and we will place the number portion of that file into our units. So we will use a split. But first, let's do the for loop, and we are looping to the end of the file. So to input file that length, but of course minus one, since we are using the zero base indexes. And in our for loop, line by line, as we read input file, we will place the value into our units. So units, which is the array of units with the index of i, will now equal the input file of the index of i. It's going to be the same. However, we only want the portion with the number, so we will do dot split, and we are splitting by comma. Remember, the file has the name of the unit, which is, let's say, inch, then comma, and then the number. So we want only everything after the comma. And what it does when it splits it, this before comma is index zero and everything after comma is index one. So we come over here and we want everything after comma. In other words, we want everything with the index of one. However, our units is double, input file is string, so we have to convert that value to a double. And as you can see, I still have it underscored because it says it cannot convert string to parameter type char, which is character, I have to specify that I'm looking for the comma character. So a lowercase c will take care of that. So again, our units with the index of i will equal the same value that is in the input file of index of i, 
but only after the comma character, which is of the index of 1, and index of 0 is the name of the unit that we just disregard. So now we loaded our units, and now we can perform the calculation, but before that, we need to make sure that the user entered a number that uh, is to be converted, let's say 100 or 1000 or whatever number, and that the user selected the units to convert from and to. In other words, that the text boxes are filled. And the only way they are filled is if the user selected units from the list box. So we can simply do an if statement, and we can check whether the user entered the correct length, not just that something is entered, but that it's actually uh, a double by using the try parse for the double. So we will do double dot try parse, and we are checking the txt length, and if the value parses, in other words, the user entered a valid number, then we can pa uh, parse that number into our length variable that is of double. And then we have to make sure that the original and desired units were clicked or entered, so we can simply do and txt original that text is not empty, and txt desired is not empty, then we have a valid input and we can perform a calculation. Otherwise, we can just display a message box saying that it's an invalid input. And to perform the calculations, I'm going to create a function that will return the result of the calculation. I'll just call it calculate, and it returns a double, and we need to pass the argument of the units array into it. So we will simply pass the units array, which is uh, double, and we also need to pass the length that the user entered, that the user actually wants to convert. And the calculation is very simple, we will simply return, and since everything is already converted into one unit of feed, like I said before at the beginning, we can use this into our calculations directly by simply dividing the unit, that is the original unit we are converting from, divided by the unit we're converting to, and all of that multiplied by the actual number. So let's say user enters 100 meters converting to kilometers, we will simply multiply all of that by 100. So we will do our length multiplied by, and in parentheses, we are multiplying by the units that are original, and remember we have the original unit index and desired unit index. So in our units with the original index divided by the units of the desired index. And that's our calculation. That's all there is to it. So now I have my function to calculate. I have to simply call it after my input validates and output the result that is returned from the function into my output text box. So our txt output dot text will equal and I'll call the calculate function and I'm passing the units as argument. I'm passing the length as argument and I'm going to convert this whole thing to string and a number. Alright, so let's run it and let's convert let's say 1000 and start with 1000 meters. I'll click meters and kilometers will be the desired unit. I'll click convert and it says 1. 1000 meters is indeed 1 kilometer. So if I click let's say inches to feet and I'll leave 1000, that's fine. I click convert, I get 1000 inches are 83.33 feet. If I click, let's say, mile into yards, I'll get 1,760,000 or so. So um, this seems to be working correctly. Let's try phantom and furlong. I don't even know what those really are. And 1,000 phantoms are 9.09 .09 furlongs. Who would have thought? But the point is, this is working correctly. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video.